morning, good morning guys. We're back at it again with another video. I've been absent. I've been spending so much time behind a freaking computer screen working on the website and getting that done. Liam Solar Course, Off-Grid Solar Basics, that is finished. It goes into so much detail about how to basically design and size your own solar system as well as like a full bill of materials for the system that we use like down to pretty well, pretty well everything that I use, down to like the conduit and everything. So you can definitely check that out. I created three bonus videos that goes along with that course uh, where I basically detail our installation in a lot more detail than I went into on YouTube. Um, I also finished my tiny house book. Holy crap, I've been working on this thing forever it seems, but it is finished and basically details this entire tiny house build. It's like a 133 page PDF. Um, over 300 construction photos from when I was building this sucker. And there's like a really nice dashboard kind of like portal area where you can go in and check out basically all of my construction videos and they're organized based on what step of construction that I'm on. And uh, that's gonna be a tremendous asset. If you wanna build a tiny house or if you're thinking about building a tiny house, anything like that, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, the fencing course that I did with Jeremy, that's done as well. So if you have any fencing projects coming up, check it out because it's almost like you're his apprentice for over two and a half hours of video. He goes into so much detail, he's more OCD than I am with stuff, like far more OCD. So the attention to detail is amazing. And it is officially winter time here in Arizona. It is like the best time of year right now where I can get a lot of crap done outside because it is like mid 60s, low 70s, uh, pretty well every single day of the week, clear sunny skies, it is perfect. I can be out here in shorts and a t-shirt and it's still quite comfortable, but uh, I'm not gonna be sweating my butt off. So what we're gonna be working on today, something that I've been meaning to do for a while, is I wanna run some LED rope light around kind of the interior of the, uh, of the awning area here. Just so that if we have friends over, we have family over and we wanna sit outside, and have some nice kind of like ambient light, then this will be really nice. So what we're gonna be doing is um, installing this. I have to run some power coming from where the tiny house panel is. Uh, so you're gonna see me wire up like a GFCI so that everything is protected and rated for outdoor use. It's gonna be good. You're gonna get some good electrical wiring knowledge that, um, that you're probably not gonna see very often. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this rope light through all the rafters and then on the ends, so like on that end there, um, it came with some clips. This LED rope light stuff came with some of these clips so I can just uh, strap it to the front face of the, uh, of the awning rafters here. All right guys, let's start with uh, drilling out these rafters. <laughs> So what we're gonna be doing is to wire up those LED lights, we're going to be running a half inch conduit or half inch liquid tight conduit, which is this flexible stuff right here. And we're gonna run that out the bottom of the utility box to a two gang um, outdoor box that's gonna be on the other side of the uh, tiny house here. And then I'm gonna run a half inch conduit going up to another, um, to another box that's going to be just under the awning so I can just easily plug in the, uh, the, the LED light strip up there. Um, there's also going to be, I'm going to move this 20 amp receptacle into that two gang box. There's also going to be a dimmer there so that we can control the brightness of the lights because I already plugged them in last night and they are, uh, they are very bright. So what I want to quickly talk about is that this receptacle here, since it's considered an outdoor receptacle, I would consider it that, is that it should be either um, a GFCI receptacle like this, or it should be GFCI protected. So you can have a circuit of receptacles that don't have one of these, 
but you can GFCI protect them right from the breaker box. You just have to buy a GFCI breaker and then just hook it up obviously to the right circuit. So the reason why things are GFCI protected is that a receptacle like this or a circuit breaker that is, um, or a GFCI circuit breaker, is that it can detect um, current that is going through an unintended path. Um, an unintended path would be like going through a person or going through water. So it'll trip this much faster than a circuit breaker would, uh, just like a standard 15 or 20 amp circuit breaker. So that's why you always see these receptacles usually in your kitchen near the sink, or you'll see them in the bathroom um, either near the sink or the tub or wherever the receptacle is. And then you also see them outdoors as well. So pretty well any receptacles that are outdoor um, need to be either a GFCI receptacle or they need to be GFCI protected. And then any receptacles that are within, um, I think the code is within three feet or it could be 39 inches or one meter within an open water source like a sink. Um, it needs to be GFCI protected. I know they can be annoying because sometimes they, they can trip on you and then you have to go find it and hit the reset button, but uh, it, is a, it is a safety measure. So first things first, when we're working on electrical stuff, is we wanna make sure that everything is dead. So you can see I've got one of these um, receptacle testers. These are really handy to have just to make sure that any, uh, any receptacles that you do wire is wired up correctly. And you can also see since the two lights are on here that there is power going to the receptacle. And we don't want to work on any live wires. So I can go to my breaker and it's going to be this one right here. So when I flick off the breaker, it turns off that receptacle. Another way to test for basically if there's any power going to this is that you can use one of these little testers. So if we turn this on, so if I turn on my little stick tester, if I stick it on this side of the receptacle, you see nothing, nothing's blinking or nothing's, nothing's happening. Let's stick it on this side. So this is the hot side of the receptacle where the hot wire is. So that's why this side beeps. This is the neutral side. So that's why you don't hear anything on that side. So if I leave that in there and I turn off this circuit, I now know that there is no electricity running into this box here. All right, so let's remove this here. the receptacle. You can see the hot side is always going to be on this side with the brass screws. Let's make sure there's nothing down there. inch liquid tight connector. <sighs> I don't really have a better bet than this one here to drill through the steel. All right, because of how wide this connector is, we gotta move this box down. Get this on here. All right, so right at the top there, under the awning, we're gonna have this single gang box, and then we'll just have a standard outlet on there for the, uh, for the LED strip, or the LED lights to plug into. And then down at the bottom, we're gonna have a 20 amp outlet and then also a, uh, just like a dimmer switch so that we can dim the lights out here because they are pretty bright. Normally when you're running conduit from an outdoor box to another outdoor box like that, you'd typically use PVC. Um, the PVC, the gray PVC stuff I think is really ugly. So we're just gonna run half inch EMT. Now if we're gonna be running EMT outside, the standard connectors um, that go into the boxes, they're not, uh, they're not weather tight or they're not weather proof. So I've got these special insulated compression connectors that are rain tight. Um, so we're just gonna be running the half inch EMT um, into this. So we don't need the lock nut on this because it just screws into, into the top here. All right, so we'll run the pipe up right to about there. 
we got about 79 inches. So on the cut edge of a metal conduit like this, there's, um, there's gonna be like burrs, metal burrs on the inside. So if you don't have a pipe reamer, then you can just use just some sandpaper here just to kind of clean that up or else those burrs will dig into the wires and that could be a potential short right there. So to maintain the 20 amp circuit, uh, we're running 12 gauge wire. This is stranded wire. If you are not gonna be using this wire for something else, so like I'm gonna be wiring up the garage and most of it's gonna be 12 gauge, um, then you can just get obviously smaller pieces cut for you. So we want a black, we want a white, and then we also want the ground. When we're taping up the, uh, the fish tape, start on the fish tape, then we're gonna work our way down over the wire, making sure it's real nice and tight. There we go. So for the straight piece of EMT, we just have to tape the wires together. We don't have to use the fish tape for this. And then we can just push the wires through the conduit. And then we should be good to go. All right, so now the fun part that we get to wire everything. I'm gonna reattach the ground to the box here. So any metal boxes like this, even those, those outdoor boxes, um, the ground should be running through them. So what we want to do here is we're going to tail off the ground wire and we'll take these three, so the two grounds and then the tail, just marat them together. Alright, so we've got the ground tailed off there. Um, that's going to be the first thing that we're going to wire up to the GFCI on the, on the ground on the bottom there. Now on the back here, you can see this side here, it says line. And then on this side here, it, it'll have this tape over it and it says load. So when we're wiring this up and we want other things GFCI protected, what we're gonna do is everything that we want GFCI protected, we're gonna put on the load side. And then the line side here is for, I guess you would call it just like the feed. So where the power is coming into this receptacle box here. Where the power is coming into this handy box here, it's gonna be obviously the yellow wire that's coming from the panel so we're going to put the white obviously on the neutral side and then the hot on the hot side here, but we're gonna put them under the line lugs and then we're gonna take this off and then we're gonna put these two wires here on the load side. So that ensures that everything else is gonna be GFCI protected. And um, instead of having to install multiple GFCIs, we only have to install one. And so that just saves money. These are, you know, 25, 30 bucks each. Whereas like a, a 20 amp receptacle like this is only, I think they're eight or nine dollars and a 15 amp receptacle is usually like a dollar or two. So we're gonna take the ground wire and put it under the, comp the plate here and then tighten that up. You're always gonna know that the side that the hot wire goes on, which is typically either black or red, it goes under the brass colored screw. Whereas on the other side, it's just like a white colored screw or silver. The neutral coming from the panel there, tighten that up. And then we know the hot can go on this side here. Tighten that down. So then if we're looking at the back here, we can remove the yellow, the yellow sticker tape here. So then on the neutral side here, 
that is going on the load side of the GFCI. I'm gonna tighten that down, flip it over, and then tighten that. So we got this level, which is basically the lowest level. And if we want to, uh, we can turn them up quite a bit here. Oof. So there we go. These are really bright lights. So these are bright LED lights. I think I would prefer if they had a bit more of a yellow tinge to them. They're pretty white, but uh, I really like it. it. It just lights up this area so much more. So this is kind of like the amount of light if we wanted to kick people out of here. It's like last call at the bar. But if we turn them down a little bit, and we go right to about here. Then we got some more, using the dimmer there, we got some more kind of mood lighting. And we got Dewey here. Well, Dewey, man, he loves the mood lighting out here. He loves sitting out here. It's Christmas day, we have some friends over here that um, live in a van conversion right now. We've got some SNES, some retro Super Nintendo going on inside. Quickly show ya. <laughs> Baba, give it a rest. Where's Dewey? He's outside. My mom got us this old uh, Super Nintendo kind of retro thing. It's got like 20 games on there. We have our friends Adam and Vanessa and we are playing on the projector. What is this? This is just the original Super Mario. Amazing. And I hope you guys have had a wonderful 2017. If 2017 sucked, make 2018 an awesome year. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Talk to you soon.